again, using the edge of that brush to just kind of really break up the edge of that side pocket to really kind of make it look like feathers. You see how it's kind of breaking that edge up? You know, in nature, again, these are not straight lines. They may look like straight lines in a picture or whatever, but um, they're really not straight lines. Okay, so now I'm going to come and use the edge of this brush to cut the edge of that where the chest meets the side pocket, all right? And look at how that just really breaks up that, that uh, you know, uh, breaks up that line, really makes it look like feathers, okay? And so you just really kind of get in that side pocket to where it really just looks nice and broken up. Okay, so, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up this brush, and uh, that's where I'll use my palette. I drag this brush kind of through the palette, and I'm pulling it to pull that edge together best as I can. And what I'm going to do with this back is I'm going to start from the back and work forward and start to stipple some white on there nice and light, okay? Just real nice and light, just kind of breaking it up. Now I can get a little, if, if I want to, like let's say I want to define this edge up here. What I can do is I can come back now and, and really kind of connect these. So I'm doing that, just kind of, I'm defining the black by making an edge with this white. And, and while I'm doing that, I'm kind of, just kind of, just kind of making that edge there, okay? And this is all dry brushing. Because okay. where that side pocket and the, the wing or the shoulder meet, that's, that's the area where you were connecting them, right? Right, right. Now, if let's say I got too white, and I'm good with that. I mean, you can see the back is, is kind of broken up. I love that. I mean, I wish I could get more of that. I've actually come back there with a little bit of dry brush on the black and stip a little bit of black over there if I want to darken that up, okay? But really, on the water, it's money. Okay, while those drakes are drying, we're going to put the white on the hens. And so essentially what the hens have is they have the white mask, and I'll show you how we put that on. But then I always do a little bit of light shading on there. As long as I got my brush wet, you know, and it's kind of empty, I'm going to do a little shading on the hens um, you know to give it a little depth. Okay, so let's let's start with the mask Let's take one of these hands This one probably be a little bit easier than the sleeper right now. I'm going to load up this brush and, I, and I'm going to put that mask on that mask is a real benchmark for that hen So I'm going to paint right on the bill. So don't worry about that. We'll paint over that But I'm going to just start and and uh, it looks pretty ugly folks, but I got to tell you that broken up edge is money. I mean, it just really is is very. Uh, and this this brush gives you just a nice broken up edge. I'm gonna go down from the base of that bill all the way around and up top here. And uh, there's your there's your hen. Okay, maybe a little bit more in there. So get those edges. That's that's where this ugly brush, this uh, chip brush, it breaks up that edge real nice to where you get a nice broken up effect. I'll call that good. Okay, so that's that's that. Now here's another thing. I'll put you know every duck for the most part, most ducks, most all your ducks have a white underbelly. Okay, so this is going to be under water line, but this is one of those things that's not a lot of work, but you get a little effect with it. What I'll do is I'll come on here with this brush while it's kind of empty, and I'll start to dry brush a little white under there. Okay, just get a little white under that rump. And, and what you find is the drier this brush is, the better. I'll do a little bit back here by the rump, 
and then I do a little bit up here by the chest. And the, dry, the drier this brush is, the better. And the more irregular that surface is, the better. Okay? So I'm just kind of pulling that white on there and just really kind of getting that that white under the side, you know, just getting that white under there. It's a little thing. Is it necessary? No. Is it easy? Yeah. So just come on, get a little bit more white under here. And now, uh, much like we did the white on the back of the drakes, I always do a gray on the hens, okay? And so... I just got, again, some Sherwin-Williams out of a can. It's just a real uh, kind of dark slate gray. And I'm going to load up the brushes. And here I'm going to do a little feathering on the hens, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with that side pocket. And I'm kind of pulling this brush together on my palette here. And I'm going to start bouncing some feathers on there. Just leaving them real broken up. Always starting again from the back to the front. And you see how that's kind of nice and broken up? That was about 30 seconds worth of feathers on there. Uh, in a real, in real quick order. Okay, so now I'll go ahead. Now that's the same technique that you used uh, the back of the drakes. Back of the drakes. But you, you looks like you may have given a little more space between where you were... Uh, I did, bouncing the brush. I did. I did. I uh, I kept it apart. And these are really to replicate those scallop feathers on the right. side and of that's, the bird. That's where, the, uh, when you cut the brush originally in this round shape, that's where this really helps, right? Right. If you see that rounded brush, what I was looking for was a brush that had that rounded edge that could give me those scallop feathers in quick order, but uh, most of them were too soft. They, were, and they weren't as stiff as this. Right. But, and, and, and again... Uh, a, a real bro that broken up ragged round shape right right not 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 a smooth round because no. feathers that's not the way feathers are no no that's like painting like what we think a decoy should be but but the, but nature's more broken up so i'm going to start from the back again and i'm going to bounce that brush space them out a little bit you know just something like that okay so I did both side pockets. Could probably stop there, but I'm going to do a little something on the side. Probably a little bit lighter on the sides. So I'm not even going to put any paint in the brush. I'm just going to kind of work it. Start from the back again. And just come forward. Just kind of do rows and fill in that back. Like so. Okay, so after I've done the side pockets and the back, you know, I'll even dry brush a little bit of gray on that tail just to give it a little bit of a little depth, a little, little different color, right? Just while that brush is empty, I'm just kind of dry brushing a little bit of gray on that tail just to give it a little, break it up a little bit, give it a little depth, a little light on the top. Okay, so we got the gray on the hands. So essentially the body's for the hunting decoy are done, right? And um, so now a little bit of detail. They're bluebills, so so let's go ahead and put some bluebills on them. Uh, this is one I do mix. Uh, I use uh, some of this neutral gray. It's a it's a Liquitex, and uh, I'll put about a quarter's worth on there. And then I'm going to use some ultramarine blue. Not much of it. You don't need a lot. This is pretty rich color. Okay. So a little bit of this ultramarine blue to cut some blue into that gray. That ought to do it. And I'm going to get me a nice uh, straight edge here, brush to paint with. I'm going to mix this color up. It's just kind of a, I don't know, like a colonial blue, I guess. And you may have to play with it a little bit to get a color that absolutely that uh, that uh, satisfies your eye, right? Absolutely. And and you know to that end, Tim, what I do is I use a lot of this um, this uh, neutral gray. I use a lot of raw umber, 
and and a lot of white and black, it, mostly the, the the raw umber and the neutral gray to really kind of mute those colors down. I mean, the, like like primary colors right out of the tube are, are just too brilliant, you know. They're too rich, and so you got to really to match nature with uh, ducks and decoys. I always use a lot of gray and a lot of raw umber to to really mute those colors down. You really want to tone them down because in the wild, you know, those colors are really kind of muted. So this is this is pretty well mixed up. Take and load the brush up a little bit. A lot of people ask about my palette. It's what I call my 40 pound palette. That's about 35 years of not knowing how much paint to mix. So I got the brush loaded up with some of this blue. I'm kind of pulling an edge with it, and I'm just going to follow those lines that Mr. Wicks did such a nice job of carving these heads. He really, these bills are amazing. These bills are extremely well carved. His heads were just a really, really signature part of his decoy. Of course, that's true with any decoy, you know. Spend spend the bulk of your time on the head. Because that's where all your personality is at. That's where all the value is, is in the head. Generally, going to probably put a couple coats on these bills, especially when I got that white coming through. So I'll let that dry and do another one. Yeah, so there you have it. I mean, primarily that's uh, what we're doing as far as putting these bluebells back together. So, you know, we started with some old decoys. Um, we figured out what repairs they needed and, and the restoration uh, side of it. Uh, then we base coated them with a, you know, put a primary on them. And then uh, um, today you saw how I paint my bluebells. Uh, from here, you know, I'll clean the eyes off. I'll maybe paint the nails, but essentially these birds are done and ready to hunt. So um, I look forward to this fall throwing them out on the water and uh, shooting some bluebills over. So uh, Mr. Wicks, we salute you. We appreciate uh, your contributions to waterfowling and look forward to hunting with your decoys.